morning little bonus one for you since i'm off this week what difference a couple of days make weather out there now not cold but you know a bit of rain yesterday which the garden needed in any way and it's blown a bit of a hoodie this morning but anyway um just gonna have a quick little chat uh, about microscopes um for koi keeping it's probably one of the most important pieces of equipment in your toolkit uh, you see a lot of people saying oh i've got no um no way of doing scrapes or i don't have a microscope or um i don't want to get a microscope i'm a bit scared of using one um it's one of those things that once you've got one and you've had a little play around with it it's, it becomes quite easy to use and um quite interesting i suppose uh, not just for scraping your fish you start microscoping all sorts of things and with a lot of kits when you order them they come with some slides preset slides with things like fry fly legs and wings and all sorts of bits and pieces blood <laughs> you know um so there's plenty of videos out there showing you how to take a scrape from a koi and then you sort of see somebody sort of using the microscope and coming up with it but uh, I've not seen many out there sort of explaining what to look for in a microscope uh, because you know you can go on there and you can spend 30 quid and get sort of like well, basically a toy with a little reflective mirror or if you look at the more expensive end, end you can sort of spend thousands and thousands of pounds for a medical grade microbiology virus finding uh, microscope which is you know way overkill um you should be looking for the koi hobbyist serious or beginner uh probably around about the sort of like 100 to 150 180 mark at the most um so yeah i'll flip the camera around and um show you what i'm using so here's my uh, my microscope. Uh, this one, this particular model, is uh, the Apex Practitioner. Um, picked this one up for just over a hundred pounds, and it's more than capable of doing the job. Um, so, what to look for when buying a microscope? Well, first off, the construction of it, the actual sort of like the casing that holds everything together, and that lot it should ideally be sort of like a nice sturdy metal construction um the cheaper plastic ones okay yeah they might work but you know they can get thrown about sometimes and it's better to have a nice sturdy metal one so starting from the top this particular model is a monocular uh, in other words it's got one eye piece um, you can get binocular ones, uh, they tend to be a bit more expensive, but a uh, monocular, like I said, it's all you really need, and you know, you can get attachments, USB camera attachments that actually go in there, so yeah, you start off at the top there, and then you get the removable eyepiece, and normally you get two come with this, this is a magnification of times 10, and then also you normally get uh, a times 20 as well. So before you even get down to the other bits, you know, you've got time to, 10 times magnification there. And you've got the turret. Normally you can get these that swivel around. So it makes it easier to look at certain angles. And then coming down again, nice sturdy arm. And then you come down to the objectives housing. So these, again, these are your objectives, these bits here. And they come on a rotating disc. So you can bring each different size into focus. Now on mine, I have a, a times four, which is the smallest one there. So that's times four magnification. So added with the eyepiece 10 times. So you've got 10 times four, so that's 10 times for four times, so it gives you 40. Going round, 
next one up there is your 10 times. So 10 times 10 gives you a times 100 magnification. Now this is the setting that you'll tend to use most, most during koi keeping. You can, you can make out most parasites with that. Um, you know, fluke definitely, trick, yes. Um, Costia and Chikadena. Once you get used to it, you'll easily notice them with the times 100. And then this one on here is the times 40, so that gives you uh, four, 400 times magnification. Now with this lens, um, what they, objective I should say, what they tend to say is that you use only use that in oil immersion and I'm not going to get into that because I start to get really complicated and tell you the truth I don't know much about it anyway so moving down from the objectives right you've got to have a table yeah or the stage as it's called and this is where you place your your slide uh, just move this out there now so that's your slide so you move that in and you move it underneath your objective so you can see it now on the cheaper microscopes which uh you know more than capable of doing the job all you get is the stage now this piece here is what they call a mechanical stage so Let's see if I can do it one handed. Pull the lever back and you drop the slide in there. Now the mechanical stage makes life a lot easier. Rather than have you use your fingers and pull the slide backwards and forwards and up and down and you can sort of like be doing it nice and slow and all of a sudden sort of move it really quick. It's a bit awkward to do, especially when you're trying to look through the microscope and look at something mechanical stage actually moves it for you. Now, if I turn this round, so that's controlled by these two dials here. So that one there will move left to right, and the top one will move it backwards and forwards, or the X, Y axis, as the scientific bots like to call it. Now, this makes life a lot easier because you can start from one edge of the slide right at the top corner go along once you get to the end move it up to it's out of shot sort of next stage and then go back the other way and with a mechanical stage it's a lot easier to cover every part of your sample so that's something else to look out for it's not necessary um, it is on sort of like the slightly higher price models, but like I said, the Apex practice, you know, just over a hundred quid. Uh, there are other models out there, Brunel and etc. So, you know, they're all, there are microscopes of the same quality as this at about the same price from different companies. So I'll get that in straight away. So next thing to look for is your focus. Yeah. So basically that just brings the stage up and down closer to the objective. Yeah, again, on the cheaper microscopes, all you have is just a single. So it's up to you to do it nice and slowly. Uh, on this one and some others, you get a fine focus. So you bring that up until it's round about there, in focus, not quite. And then you just use the fine to bring it back and forwards. And sometimes when you're looking at a sample, especially if you've got a thick bit of mucus from a fish, um, part of it will be in focus, but then you might see something underneath the uh, mucus, sort of like at the bottom of it, that ain't quite in focus. So you just have to play with the fine focus, get it up and down. So that's, a little, so that's something you've got to look out for, make sure you have. Now, moving down again, just in there is a LED light. And when buying a microscope, make sure that you have got um, an electric light. 
there are a lot of microscopes out there that just have a little mirror that use natural light that's reflected up into the objective. And these are no good whatsoever for koi keeping. They are literally sort of like toy microscopes uh, or for, you know, kids who just learning stuff. Uh, absolutely no good whatsoever for what we need them for. So make sure you've got a light. And this one control comes with a dimmer switch so you control how much light comes through the bulb onto your sample. And with practice, you'll sort of learn what you need to do. Uh, now it's not necessary, but this one has also got, just down there, an iris diaphragm. And basically that works not on the brightness of the thing because that's controlled by your dimmer switch there, but it brings contrast into whatever sample you're looking at by diffracting the light through the, di the, through the diaphragm. Um, and sometimes, again, it's one of them things you have to play with and each objective has a different height setting for your, for your uh, iris. Um, also, you have the ability to pop different slides in there, so you can sort of like have different coloured slides. Not really necessary in uh, the koi keeping game, but if you sort of get into microscoping and you want to play around with different things, uh, it is a handy feature to have. So, like I said, so the iris diaphragm, not necessary, but it, it is another useful tool to have. And you control the height of the iris on this knob just there. And then you need a nice sturdy weighted base. I mean, it, you know, it, it's a hefty lump in weight, but nice sturdy, hefty base to just to keep it well planted when you're, when you're sort of in the... Uh, when you got it there and you're pressing your eye against it, you don't want it to fall over. When you've got cats or dogs or whatever, you don't want things to go flying over. So that basically is the microscope and what you need to look for. And then obviously you need your slides. So these are readily available, Amazon and that lot, you know, boxes. Can't remember how many is in there. I think it's about a hundred or something like that. So they're individually wrapped. Nice clear glass slide. And for putting your sample on. And then these, if I can get them out. Uh, yeah. Little covers, slide covers. I need, I'm not going to try and get one out. Basically they're a really, really thin piece of glass. You just need one, make sure when you pull these out, sometimes you can grab three or four and you don't even notice it. But just little clear glass covers that you actually drop over the top of your sample. Don't push it down on your sample. Otherwise that will sort of stop anything uh, that you're trying to find moving from moving, if you understand what I'm saying. So basically get your mucus sample into the center of your slide Take one of these and just just drop it over the top. Wipe any excess water or mucus from the bottom of the slide before you use it and place it in. I may do a video later on when I have to do um, some samples myself. But at the moment, I'm not, you know, we'll leave that for another day. Like I said, there's plenty of videos out there where you see people taking scrapes and things. but. I just thought I'd quickly run through the microscope, just to explain how the microscope, what to look for, what pieces to have, and how it basically works. All right, guys, uh, I'll leave that there. We'll grab a look at the fish in a minute. That's what we're all here for, is just to look at the fish. But for those of you who haven't got a microscope and you're thinking of getting one, um, just hope you know that little bit of information just makes life a lot easier. All right, so the main things to look out for is that you've got removable optic eyepiece there because you can buy cameras. You take this off and you can drop a drop a camera uh, with a USB that will go into your laptop. You can also buy 
clips and things that fit so you can fit your mobile phone over for taking pictures uh, it's up to you whether you go this far um you know i try hovering the phone over the end of it it's not easy uh, but if you can get the attachments it makes life a lot easier so make sure you've got an eyepiece make sure your objectives are a good quality strong build um, and like i said you want to have at least a time 10 times 10 which is your main one um, you can get different sizes 400 is going a bit too far if you can get a 200 uh, or 20 i should say that'd be even better but you can turn that one into 200 by changing the eyepiece to a 20 eyepiece so you don't have to change the objectives round. you know you have to have a stage yeah you don't have to have the mechanical stage but makes life a hell of a lot easier if you can get if you get a microscope with a mechanical stage focus knob obviously you need to have a focus yeah get one with a fine focus again makes life a lot easier for you and you have to have an a, a light an led electric light or battery light even but you've got to have a light the ones with the little tiny mirrors underneath uh are no good to mana beast for this sort of stuff Right, okay guys, go have a look at the fish in a minute. Take care and I'll see you soon.